Welcome to the second session of this course. In the last class, we covered the basics of sketching. Now, we shall learn about part design. We shall look into a few examples to learn various features used for part designing. I will walk you through these three exercises while explaining the features of part design. If you are comfortable, you may do the following exercises along with me. Or you may watch till I go through the whole exercise and then practice. This slide shows the part design workbench toolbars and the commands associated with them. In the following exercises, I will use some of the commands and some of them in the upcoming sessions. The most commonly used commands are pad to add thickness to a sketch and pocket to remove material from the body. Let's jump into creating a solid model. Here is a glimpse of the model that we are going to design in Katia. As you can see, this part has a base lab with a slot underneath. A vertical pad stands between two holes on the slab and a hollow boss extends from this vertical pad. So, let's begin this exercise. In the Katia window, first, I will click on Start from the menu bars, then click on Mechanical Design, then on Part Design to start a new part. Let's name this part as Tutorial. I will uncheck the Enable Hybrid Design checkbox and check the Create a Geometrical Set box, then click on OK. Let's save this part file in a preferred location. As you can see, the file extension for a solid model is cat part. From the Reference Elements toolbar, I will select the Point command. I will let the X, Y, Z coordinates be 0 and then click on OK. If you are unable to see the specific toolbar handler, you can right-click on the right-side vertical bar like so, where all the toolbar names are visible. You can select the checkbox beside the required toolbar and it appears in the Katia window. You can also do this by right-clicking on the side vertical bar, then clicking on Customize. In the Toolbars tab, you can click on Restore All Contents and Restore Position to reset the toolbars to default settings. While we are here, Let's look at the other tabs in this window as well. Let's start with the Start Menu tab. In the Start Menu tab, you can create shortcuts of the workbenches by moving them to the Favorites column. Under the User Workbenches tab, you can create your own workbench, meaning you can include a set of toolbars under a named workbench. In the Commands toolbar, you can create shortcuts to various actions. For example, I have created a shortcut for hide or show action here. To do this, I can click on all commands in the categories column and then scroll down to hide or show and select the same. Then click on show properties. In the accelerator field, I can type in space. This allows me to press the space bar on the keyboard to use the hide or show command instead of clicking the icon every time I want to hide or show an object in the Katia window. I can click on Close to exit this window. Let's take a look at the next slide to do step 1 of the first exercise. We shall use Centered Rectangle and Pad commands in this step. To begin with, I will click on the Position Sketch from Sketcher toolbar. Then select the XY plane from the Specification tree for the Reference Planar Support field. I will set origin type as projection point from the drop down menu and then select point 1 as reference from the specification tree. You may swap the vertical and horizontal axis if required and then click on OK. Now, as shown in the picture below, I will select the centered rectangle from the profile toolbar and draw the rectangle by picking the origin as the center of the rectangle. Let's use the constraint command from the constraint toolbar to give the dimensions as shown in the picture below. Now, let's make this 2D rectangle into a 3D cuboid. To do this, we need to exit the Sketcher workbench and access the Part Design commands. So, I will click on the Exit Workbench icon on the top right corner of the Katia window as shown. Take a second to observe the change in the toolbars. You can see a different set of toolbars now that we are in the Path Design Workbench. To convert a 2D sketch into a solid body, 
we can choose commands from the sketch based features toolbar. Let's click on the pad command. If you read the warning message that popped up, it indicates that the pad command is going to be applied to the last sketch that we worked on, that is sketch 1, which is what we need to do. So, I will click on the OK button. A cuboid has three dimensions. We have defined length and breadth in the 2D sketch. The pad command allows us to define the third dimension, that is, height or depth. Here in the pad definition window, under the first limit, you can see that there are different options for the type of limit, like dimension, up to next, up to last, up to plane, and up to surface. Dimension type is where we simply provide a numerical value and a solid body is formed in the specified direction. Up to next or up to last apply when there are relevant objects at a distance. Up to plane implies a reference plane at a distance. Up to surface indicates that the pad is applied till the selected surface on the object. We will use these options in our exercise as we go. Now, I will update the length value to 10 mm. Observe that the selection under Profile or Surface is already filled with Sketch 1, which is our most recent and only sketch. I can click on the Reverse Direction button to see how the length direction is changing. Clicking on the Preview button helps us to see the pad before we confirm it. Now, I will click on OK to exit this command. Pad command is now complete and we can see the base of our part model in the graphics area. In step 2, we will use centered rectangle and pocket commands to create a slot as shown in this picture. Let's create the slot at the bottom of this slab as shown in the picture. Every sketch needs a reference plane or surface. We shall use the breadth of this slab as the reference plane for the following sketch. Let's select the surface as shown and then click on the position sketch from the sketcher toolbar. Observe how the sketch positioning window assumed the reference planar support as pad 1 or face 1 and placed a coordinate axis on the same face that we selected. I will click on the OK button. Katia also oriented the current sketch plane along the normal view. Next, I will select the centered rectangle command and place the center a little above the center of the coordinate axis but on the y-axis and apply dimensions as shown. Also, let's constrain the bottom line of the rectangle to coincide with the local origin by using the constraint defined in dialog box option. I will click on the exit sketcher icon. Now, I will click on the pocket command from sketch based features in the part design workbench. Similar to the pad command, pocket also has the same first limit types. Here, we are going to use the up to surface option. For the limit field, we will select the other end of the surface as shown. Observe that the profile or surface selection is updated to sketch 2. I will click on the reverse direction to see that the pocket is applied in the correct direction and then I will click on the OK button. Now, you can see that a slot is created at the bottom of the pad. Let's move on to creating a hole on the top of the slab as shown in the picture. For this step, we shall use circle and pocket commands. I will select the top surface of the block and click on the position sketch and then click on OK. Now, I will select the circle command from the profile toolbar and draw a circle as shown. I am aligning the circle to the vertical axis. If you missed aligning while drawing the circle, don't worry. You can later apply a coincidence constraint between the center of the circle and the vertical axis. Next, let's apply dimensions as shown and then click on the exit sketcher icon to come out of this sketch. Next, let's select the pocket command from the sketch based features toolbar. I will set the first limit type to up to last. Then, I will set the profile or surface selection to sketch 3. We can see the preview of the feature by clicking on the preview command. If you are satisfied with the pocket feature, you can click on OK to complete this command. As you can see, the up to last option looks for the end of that pad and creates the pocket feature. 
As a continuation to step 3, I will use the mirror command to create a duplicate of the hole that we just created, symmetrical to the central axis. Now, we need to create another hole symmetric to this hole along the H direction axis. To do this, I shall click on the mirror command from the transformation toolbar. For the mirroring elements field, I will select the H direction axis or Z explain. And for the object to mirror field, I will select the inner surface of the hole from the graphics area. I will click on preview to verify if the command is performed correctly and then I will click on OK to exit this command. The selection of the mirroring elements can be done from the specification tree as well. If you are unable to see the specification tree, you can click on view from the menu bars, then check the specifications option. You may also press the F3 button on your keyboard. Another option is to check the swap visible space from the view toolbar and hide the specification tree from there to be able to see it in the actual visible space. If you select an object from the specification tree, keeping the control key pressed while scrolling the mouse with the help of the middle mouse button, you can zoom in and out of the specification tree. Let us now draw the sketch for the vertical pad as seen in the picture and then apply pad command to add thickness to the sketch. First, I will click on the ZX plane from the specification tree and then select the position sketch command. Next, I will click on OK on the position sketch window. If you are unable to see the model properly, you may click the fit all in option from the view toolbar. Let's use the profile command to draw the sketch as shown. I will constrain this horizontal line to coincide with the base as shown. At this point, I will activate the snap to point on the grid icon in the sketch tools toolbar. Observe how the mouse pointer is snapping my start point to the closest corner of the grid. The grid option can be activated using the grid command from the visualization toolbar. Grid acts as reference points and lines and helps guide the sketch or model. In some instances, you might want to turn off the grid option. I will coincide the start point with the base corner. I will coincide this vertical line with the side of the base. Let's apply dimensions and constraints as shown in the picture below. Sometimes, you might not have all the dimensions that you need for a sketch directly. The dimensions that are not obvious from the sketch picture need to be derived by doing some calculations. To make the sketch fully constrained, observe the parts of the sketch that are moving and in which direction. To define the appropriate dimensions, once the sketch is fully constrained, I will exit the sketcher workbench. Next. I will click the pad command from the sketch based features toolbar. In the pad definition window, let's leave the first limit type to dimension and apply a length of 6 mm. Make sure the profile or surface selection is the current sketch. I will check the mirror extent checkbox as shown. This allows us to apply a pad on both sides of the sketch at equal lengths. Now, I will click the preview button to see how the material is added on both sides of the sketch and then click on OK. The width of the pad that we just created should be 12 mm. Now how do we verify this? In real life, we would take a ruler or a vernier and measure the width. Similarly, in the CATIA software, we use the measure command. Let's click on the measure between command from the measure toolbar. If the command is not showing, you can activate the toolbar by clicking on the view menu bar and then clicking on toolbar and then selecting the measure toolbar. We can select any two lines or surfaces or planes or points to measure the distance between them. Here, I shall select the faces of the pad on opposite ends and the normal distance shows as 12 mm. Let's move on to the next step. For the next step, we shall use circle and pad commands to create the boss as shown in this slide. 
I will draw two concentric circles and apply a pad to extrude the common area between the circles. I will first click on the horizontal face on top of the most recent pad as shown and select the position sketch and then click on OK. I will select the circle command from the profile toolbar and draw two concentric circles with the diameters as shown in the picture below. Let's constrain the D36 circle to coincide with the corner point of the pad as shown. We could activate the geometrical constraints and dimensional constraints icons from the sketch tools toolbar or go to tools, then options, then mechanical design, then sketcher and then check the boxes under constraint as shown. Now, the sketch is fully constrained. I will click on exit sketcher. Now, I will click the pad icon from the sketch based features toolbar. I will leave the first limit type to dimension. Update length value to 25 mm and make sure the correct sketch is selected for the profile or surface field. Let's click on the preview button and rotate the model to see if the pad is being created in the right direction. If not, I can click on the reverse direction button. Check the preview and then click on OK. Observe how the thickness is added in between the two circles. This implies that the software requires a closed sketch to add thickness. If the same sketch has two closed curves, then the software will assume the space between these two curves to add thickness. The tutorial model is now complete. Let's save the model by going to File and clicking on Save or by just pressing Ctrl S on the keyboard. In the specification tree, if we click on the plus icon beside part body, we can see all the features that were applied to this model along with the respective sketches underneath each feature. Any of these sketches can be edited by double-clicking on that specific element from the tree.